Hello, my name is Lee Presser. This is my show. I speak frequently to very interesting people. Some of these conversations are so exciting, so intellectually stimulating, I thought others might like to listen in. <coughs> this is the reason we started recording Conversation with Lee Presser. Welcome to Conversation with Lee Presser. Our guest today is Roger Walker, Executive Director of Regulatory Environmental Group for Missouri. RegForm's primary objective is the development and negotiation of environmental regulations and policies in Missouri that are based on sound science and produce demonstrated environmental improvements commensurate with the cost involved for compliance. I first learned about this organization in a January Post-Dispatch article written by Jeff Tomich. The thrust of the article was that the 2009 legislative discussion about the second nuclear reactor at Callaway County became politically overheated and went nowhere. Mr. Walker believes there is a need for a calm, honest debate about energy issues and how today's decisions will affect tomorrow's business investment in Missouri. Today's decisions will also determine whether there will be sufficient energy 10, 20 years from now for you and your children to run your AC, your washer dryer, or your refrigerator. Roger Walker, welcome to Conversation. Welcome. Nice Thank you for having me, uh, I should having you here today. It's been a long time. We were actually supposed to have you some time ago, had some problems, but now you're here today. Just let me say this, that we're actually recording this on the 12th of April, and it will be uh, shown somewhere out in May, so if anything changes between now and then, that's the reason. Um, so. How did you happen to come to be the executive director of this uh, organization, and what were the goals? Well, I've been uh, I've been the executive director of Reg Farm twice. I've been that for the last seven years, and then I had a gap of a few, and I actually helped start the organization back in 1994. 94. So Why? The group's been around a long time. Why? Um, because we felt and I think correctly, that the, we weren't having an honest discussion of, of uh, environmental and energy issues in the state, that there was a need to, to, to have uh, sort of lop off the, the ends of, of the rhetoric and focus on, on the policy and the facts and the science and technology that all make sense. What's the definition in your mind of an honest debate? I think to me an honest debate is, is one where um, you have credible information that's vetted, you have a participatory process, and, in, and you get folks who are normally used to uh, speaking in silos actually taking off the, the jackets a little bit and, and, and talking in a, in a more direct and open way. Mm -hmm. And what, what was reality? What were you finding that was making you believe that there needed to be a change? Well, with respect to the, on the energy issues in, in particular, um, what, it wasn't just me alone. Uh, when, you, when you had an issue like, like the debate on, on nuclear power, uh, you take that as an example and you can take any example. On that one in particular, there were some groups that were arguing that, uh, that nuclear power has the same carbon footprint as fossil fuels as coal, which struck me as wholly untrue. And I'm not a scientist. Mm -hmm. And then on the other hand, uh, you have some folks saying that it's you know it's always this lowest cost provider, it's safe and secure. Well, these are these are sound bites and positions, and and you're having decisions made in the Missouri General Assembly based on basically on, on sound bites and, and self-interest rather than you know well articulated and vetted facts and and going from there. Nuke power has been a really I mean, th th there's been a lot of stuff that's been talked about it, both positive and negative. I remember when I was a kid, probably when you were as well, you heard them talking about, oh, power's so cheap to, m too cheap to meter. It's right. just, it's almost free, you know, to just be able to produce all this stuff. It hasn't quite worked out that way at all, has it? Well, it, it hasn't, and there, there are lots of reasons, uh, you know, based, you know, the regulatory aspects, the protective aspects, and... You know, there, there are lots of good reasons why the cost moved up and construction costs. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's, it's no longer too cheap to meter. That's, right. That's now, when you talk about the regulatory costs, why don't you describe to people what that entails, what, why it is that it's not too cheap to meter? Well, um, 
Start from the beginning. Somebody says, uh, you know, a, a guy, uh, I can't remember his name right now, the new guy who's the head of, uh, of Ameren. He sure. says, okay, I want to build a nuke power plant uh, down there in Callaway. From the moment that he utters that to his staff, what happens then? Um, well, you're going to be disappointed here, but uh, I'm, I'm really not here to talk about nuclear power and what the pros and cons of that. Oh, I, I, I'm know. not talking about the, the okay. pros and cons. I'm just talking about what is it that when you talk about this regulatory environment, what is sure. it that has to happen before a business is allowed to, to do what they okay. want to do? Okay, that's fair enough. Well, you, you know, I, to me, uh, I'm taking it away from nuclear a little bit. I, I really think what the issue is, is what is the proper energy mix? And what are the factors okay. that go into it? Whether, you know, nuclear is just one of those items for debate. There are alternative powers, you know, solar and wind. There's biomass. People talk about uh, geothermal. I mean, the question we have is we, we don't know what are the best opportunities for, for Missouri. We don't have that carefully vetted. We don't have an energy policy in the state or in the nation. And, and so we're, we're all sort of working with, uh, you know, within our silos rather than trying to figure out, you know, what's right for national security, what's best for long-term cost, availability, um, and reliability. And those are all the factors we have to be looking at. And each of those energy sources have to be viewed, you know, within the technical and scientific and policy regimen. Are we creating jobs? Are we creating cost overruns? And, you know, the problem is, is not you know, the, the steps you have to go through. The problem is we, we have emerging energy issues that we don't have a lot of expertise on. We have a general assembly that's part-time and, and they listen primarily to lobbyists. They're not experts on energy. No one expected them. They weren't elected to be experts on energy. And so what we, what we thought we needed, and we worked with the with a with a, a group of others to try to we how do you how do you frame this debate and this discussion in in a more logical manner? What are the right you know what are facts you know what are the right facts? What's the right discussion? Who are the right folks we need to talk with? And let's look at our options in a way that creates jobs for Missouri, that creates opportunity, and that creates reliable and energy. That's 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 the framework, mm -hmm. and we don't have we don't have a forum for have that discussion. All, we have people who are posturing and, and politicizing certain issues that they want, and they may be right. They may have good information, but it's hard to vet, and we don't have a very good mechanism to vet it. Perfect example is this Proposition C in Missouri, where the voters two to one passed a renewables mandate, but it was written in the back room. It wasn't well vetted. There are problems with it, is what's the 1% what's the cost mean? What's the geographic sourcing mean? You know, and what's, what's the right mix of, of alternative energy? None of that was really carefully vetted. Now, of course, now the problem with that is the General Assembly refused to touch the issue in Missouri. We, we didn't, they didn't pass renewables mandates. So, you know, some, some other groups decided they would pass an uh, initiative petition. That's all well and good. But it doesn't go through a vetting process. And so you're left with trying to figure out what does Prop C mean, where you have to go to the Public Service Commission, potentially courts, regulatory rulemaking process, and and we don't know exactly what those words mean. And that makes it very awkward. And so people are posturing on one side or the other. What we want to be in this Missouri Energy Initiative Group, which we helped start, is that not-for-profit, think tank, honest brokered information that hopefully policymakers can rely on to make those difficult decisions. That's, that's all we're looking to do. We're not advocating. We want to educate. And yet there's a fine line between advocacy and education. We want to we want to be on clearly on the side of providing good, solid, scientific, technical information to policymakers and citizens to make smart choices for Missouri. Period. When, when you say we, <coughs> who are you referring to? This, much, sure, this yes. organization is much more than just Missouri you. Energy Initiative. We started about a year and a half ago. Uh, it was an idea that was probably fostered by my, myself because I have some experience trying to create think tank technical based groups. And the University of Missouri, where uh, a guy named Dr. Gary Stacy, who was the uh, you know, director of their um, Center for Sustainable Energy, and we got President Gary Forsey, former President Gary Forsey, University of Missouri System, uh, to agree that this made a lot of sense. And we set about creating, you know, having that this conversation with what we thought were community leaders. 
we, we have on our board, we try to create a board that we would consider somewhat bulletproof. High level enough, thoughtful people who wanted to have this honest discussion. We have uh, Dr. Mark Ryden, Chancellor of Washington University. We have Dr. Jack Carney, Missouri University of Science and Technology. We have former Governor Bob Holden. We have former Congressman Kenny Holsoff. Of course, Holden was Democrat, Holsoff was Republican. We have former Director of DNR, Steve Mafood. And we have many others, Missouri Botanical Garden. And, then, and now we've been reaching out to utility and energy sectors and uh, commercial sectors to build a board that we think can actually vet these issues in a meaningful way, hire an executive director, hire a staff, and we've raised the money to do that, to actually be a force of, of providing that kind of information that legislators need, that regulators need, that can s sort of frame some of this, these questions and, and issues in a way, way that, you know, and I, in a way that, that I don't know where it goes, in a way that's, that's a discussion, that's a dialogue like you have, mm -hmm. in a way that, that provides some meaningful input and, and takes us to, to a level where, where people can feel like we're moving forward, we're looking at all these issues and trying to make the right choices for our state. Well, what Apparently. progress do you feel that you've made over the last year and a half in D better defining the issues and having those who make decisions I mean, uh, yeah. actually come to the right conclusions. Well, the couple of things that we said about doing was a creating a you know a, a really solid, high-class, first-rate board. We've done that, and we're going to expand that. And we've raised money, so we've done that. The other thing we've done is in November, and we ha and we held a meeting in November on Election Day. What was that? November fourth, I guess. We held an, uh, a meeting on Election Day, and I don't know how much more nonpartisan you can be than that, mm -hmm. where we talked about sort of these 10 emerging energy topics. And we brought in 150 people, our guests. We didn't charge anyone to come. We, we, hand, we selected these cross-section of environmental groups, utility groups, manufacturing. And we had a day-long discussion of, of in various breakout groups as to what are the issues, what are some of the key facts? And what are the opportunities in Missouri? And what are the roadblocks? Those are, that's how we sort of framed the discussion. And we did that for nuclear. We did coal or actually fossil fuels. We did it for alternative energy. We did it for efficiency. We had this, we had this really marvelous dialogue of just folks sort of, you know, taking off their coats and, 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 and openly talking. Some of it got a little heated. Some of it got vetted. And some of it was, was, was very smart. And so that, that was sort of our f attempt to just frame the questions and then, and then put that into a uh, position, not a position paper, but a, a, a dialogue. And then the next step would be probably to pare down those issues and get more into the weeds as to where we are in some of those specific topics. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm not sure where we'll start. It might start on Prop C, alternative energy, because that's, that's in the General Assembly right now, the nuclear debate. But what we discovered is we're all volunteers, and these are pretty high-level volunteers. Mm -hmm. Until you have someone who's got their hand at the wheel 24-7, you have an organization that has a great idea, but you need someone who's leading the troops. And so I think our first goal now is to get over that hump of hiring an executive director, mm -hmm. identify those issues where we, we, th we think more information, more vetting, bringing in different sides and having that honest discussion, probably writing some position papers, technical, scientific, um, research oriented, vetted within our group and, and position those in a way that we can help frame the public policy discussion. And that's where we are. Well, there seems to be in public policy, th not just in Missouri, but throughout the nation, a, uh, a tension between those who believe that people who have money and, have, and are in industry, that they should be the ones taking the lead in, in the energy debate and actually making things happen. On the other side of this tension are those who um, are either part of the public or part of the public sector, as in government, who say, oh no, we'll tell private industry, this is what we want you to accomplish. Right. Does your group have, does it come down on one side or the other of this? or? You know, what, what's mm. your thinking about, what is your thinking about this? Well, my tension? personal thinking is, uh, <laughs> in a nutshell, is facts are facts are facts are facts, period. You know, there are times when the, you, the people who have the best source of information, you know, whether it's electric generation or people, uh, you know, in the nuclear industry or whatever, they have the best information. The 
Problem is, even the smart things they might say are suspect because they have an agenda. And so our group wants to be where we can we can vet the facts that are that are you know whether wherever they come from, and try to articulate that in in a, in a way that that transcends the silos. That's mm -hmm. that's that's our goal, um, and I, it has to be broad based and diverse. We if we create a group that doesn't have some diversity, we're shot out of the gate. That's why we brought in high level folks that we have on our board, and we're, we 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 the only utility we have on our on our board right now is is Ameren. Um, and they understand. I mean, I would have to say Warner Baxter was, was great. He understood exactly that, that we're trying to vet these issues. We all do better if we have an honest vetting of these issues. I think sometimes on the, you know, both on the manufacturing side, utility side, and even the environmental side, you're always afraid you're not going to get your voice heard or, or it's going to be an unfair debate or, or you're just there set up to be beat up. Um, and that's what we want to avoid. We want to find a path where we're credible our staff is credible. The issues that we're trying to present are, are fair and balanced. And do it in, in an environment, political environment right now, where that's not that's not what's happening right now. It's not the no, norm. No, I mean when you look. So at we're the, we're swimming upstream a little bit to try uh, to do that. When you look at some of the commercials that uh, appear on television, you know they they're very slanted. They're they're designed to try and talk people into one position or another position, exactly. rather than to bring them uh, educated to this is what we're trying to accomplish and this is why we're trying to accomplish. Right. But I would have to say that of the people who are out there in, in television land who are listening to this right now, just like in the opening uh, script that I was uh, introducing you, uh, they're concerned, am I going to be able to run my AC? Am I going to have right. heat for my house? Will I have, you know, can the television go on? You know, basically we live in a, an electric world and they want to make sure that whatever is going on out there, that they have the ability to do the things they want to do, and it's affordable. I think you've framed it exactly right. Maybe, we're, maybe we all want too much. We, we, we want instant electricity. We want instant energy. We want to be able to not have any gas. We don't want to pay a lot more for it. And yet, and yet Proposition C passed two to one. We want alternatives to be part of that mix. Well, at least at this point, alternatives are never cheaper than, than burning coal. They're mm -hmm. just not, not even close. Maybe that changes over the over time. Maybe that's where some of the vetting comes in. For for us, I think it's this understanding what is, where energy comes from, what resources do we have, how do you provide it in a reliable manner, and and how do you do it in a in a, in a sustainable way ultimately. Mm -hmm. it, these are difficult and emerging, complicated issues. That's that's the problem, and the trust level is not high. True, and you know I've been doing this show for now over ten years. And even in the earliest days, we had conversations about renewable energy. And even then, we had advocates, it's just around the corner. Right. It's always just around the corner. And uh, the public cannot be dependent upon something that's just around the corner. They, they, they need uh, an actual technology that actually works and will deliver every single time that they turn the switch on. And that's and part that's, of the smart. That's exactly right. And, and that's what they want. And yet they have been told that, well, there's some there's secrets that are be, being hid in a drawer somewhere. And, right. and, and if only we could get those bad people to open the drawers, then we could have this stuff and it would be too cheap to meter or yeah. whatever it is that the, you know, the promises that are being made. But, uh, for example, um, Albariki, they've got, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a, a subunit within them that uh, works on uh, on. Uh, uh, b building buildings that use minimal amounts of energy. As a matter of fact, they even, in front of their place there at 170 and uh, Page, uh, they have a windmill outside because part of uh, that program requires that you generate a certain amount of, uh, of energy, which they're doing. But nevertheless, if they got cut off from Ameren's main line to the building, the lights go out. That's true. They, uh, you, know, you can save all the energy you want, but you have to generate some energy as well. Yeah, for us, I you know I think part of the educational process is understanding that we we do we are reliant about eighty percent on coal. That's that's the reality. It's not going to change anytime soon. Well, during this discussion, what was said without getting into details? Sure. What was said about coal and the future of coal? Were people like, I'm sure the environmentalist groups that were involved were like. <laughs> Coal, and then there were others. You well, know, the Ameren people—they were probably saying, "Hey, we're trying to generate electricity here." So, what what was 
the, the tension and what was well, the, you know, the there end? was some tension, but there was a there was a real honest discussion between some of the you know some on the coal company and utility side, and, and not just Ameren, because we invited uh, a group of folks, and on and uh, you know it was I th I felt our discussion was probably more honest than I had seen in terms of and it wasn't we didn't have any media there, we didn't have any press, we weren't taking you know careful notes, we we're just trying to figure this out. We had that, and that was the de the debate. China builds a coal-fired power plant every week. Right. We're 80 percent reliant on coal. That's not going to change anytime soon if you want to have low-cost, uh, affordable, you know, reliable energy. Renewables is part of the mix, but it's not a panacea. It's not going to happen overnight. So, you know, because you know, and, and and people admittedly are, are in a kill coal campaign. You know, the Sierra Club challenges every permit. They they work hard to make sure no new coal-fired facility is built. You know, that's, that's the reality we live in. What's their in. agenda, the, the Sierra Club, when they do that? Well, they want to eliminate the use of fossil fuel, or at least coal. What, what, and what do they want to do with their houses in order to have a refrigerator that works? Well, I, I guess they think the just around the corner is closer and than, uh, than some of others think it is. They think that, that, that if you I just simply cut off energy production as it exists now that no that, i hope they don't believe that, that. that will force <laughs> that that will force all this alternative energy to suddenly spring forward well you know I, you know not to speak for them but i guess um i i guess they think the time frame is quicker and easier and cheaper than than what others believe and so that's where the vetting of the economics and the job creation and where are we trying to go with this i don't i don't have the answers but i just know that we have to have a better discussion mm -hmm. I don't know that... Um, well, we need more than discussion. We actually need action because... That's a good point. The, uh, <clears throat> uh, it, has, it was talked about, I think even back during the... Uh, uh, when President Obama was then Senator Obama, and he was talking about the, uh, um, you know, the electric infrastructure and you know, the, what do they call it, the backbone or whatever, with the, where, right. where all, these, uh, all this electricity ties in and crosses uh, states, that this is kind of old and that it Antique. actually is in need of, of, of an upgrade. Yeah, it's totally. But of course, you don't want to get to the upgrade until you know what you're trying to upgrade to. That's right. And while we're hanging around having all these discussions and not coming to any conclusions, we can't be doing the upgrades. I think there, there's one area where we will almost certainly uh, focus our first efforts, and that is energy efficiency. You know, where... Yes. I think everybody can agree everyone with that. everyone right. tends to agree that it's a good idea. Right. Now there's some I mean, nuances of how you get putting there. insulation in, in in attics, you know, putting insulation in the sides of buildings, um, making cars more right. efficient, making um, uh, computers and computer screens more efficient. Because I understand that they, they burn huge amounts of energy. That's what I understand as well. You know, but the, the, we have to find a way to make energy efficiency work, both for you know for manufacturing, for consumers, for you know, for low income and for the utilities. You have to have a process where, you know, where utilities don't simply, you know, pay for all the cost of efficiency without some, some rate benefit. You don't want to raise, you don't want to have to raise rates or, or, or have efficiency measures that, that low income can't afford to do. Mm -hmm. So it's a, that, that's a different discussion than, you know, a uh, hardcore issue is, is, is nuclear versus coal or nuclear versus alternative. Efficiency, at least I think you can frame that in a way where I, where I, I believe in the pub, from a public policy perspective, you can create something that makes sense for utilities and consumers and for industry. And, that, and we have legislation in place to, to move that forward. Mm -hmm. um, there's still some battles to go to try to make, get that right, to work with the PSC. But that, that at least is a manageable bite, I believe. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're where we'll spend a lot of time. I think you could knock yourself silly trying to you know debate the nuclear issue. Um, I don't think our group will 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 be heavily involved in that discussion, mm -hmm. except to try to you know where someone says something incredibly stupid. It would be nice to have vet that right. that doesn't make any sense. Yes. We got about four or five minutes here, and before we go any further with that, I want to go almost back to the beginning where sure. when I asked you about you know the regulatory environment for nuke. Um, <clears throat> what I was really getting at, and what you and I both know, is that the, that for many, many decades now, it's been made almost impossible for anybody who has money to be able to create a nuclear power plant. Now, nuclear, in my opinion, is wonderfully clean and efficient, 
and at the same time wonderfully dangerous as we just have uh, experienced with the, uh, with, uh, the Japanese mm -hmm. earthquake and uh, tsunamis. But it is a wonderful alternative to burning coal, which so many people like the Sierra Club or the Missouri Coalition for the Environment uh, abhor. So we've got to come to some conclusion. Um, if yeah. they think that somehow we're going to invent you know, solar panels that are going to be so efficient that they're going to substitute for all this, I'm with them. Let's let, get those inventors out there, but let's have a demonstration project. I remember mm -hmm. uh, from history that electrification of the United States did not happen in a matter of a couple of years. I mean, it took decades for that to happen. If you think you're just mm -hmm. going to change the whole system over in a matter of a couple of years, they are sadly mistaken. No, that's a very good point. You know, on a nuclear, I, I think my personal view, and we haven't taken a position on it, is that at least, at least get into the framework where you can start the permitting process and continue this discussion. The inter inter interesting thing about nuclear is, is that the further out you go, with 40 years or 60 years, the cheaper it is. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a great source of energy, and it's uh, largely CO2 free. Um, Except it has these rods that come out at the yeah, other end. Yeah, the dangerous, you do yeah, the dangerous aspect of it. So you know, so you have, but that, that's 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 a fair debate. On the cost issue, yeah, it costs more up front. Clearly, it costs more up front. Oh, much. Um, and yet, the the discussion is how do you, you know is, is strapping those costs over time? Is that is that the right decision? And of course, the real interest, unfortunately, has been that industries who have built new power plants have done so inefficiently or just absolutely stupidly and have not put in all the safeties and therefore the public is scared to death because they know that uh, uh, like in Japan you know that's I forget how wide the Pacific Ocean is but nevertheless some of that dust has uh, settled into the United States. Yeah, you and can't so ignore that debate. Uh, you know, so if you're Japan. living in Callaway County and you're living, or uh, you're living in St. Louis, Callaway County isn't that far away, and we are downwind in St. Louis. Well, we won't be having a tsunami uh, anytime soon in in That's Middle true, Missouri. But things it wasn't, it wasn't the uh, wasn't the earthquake. It was no, the tsunami. It was tsunami that, that right. the and it wasn't really the tsunami so much as it was that they didn't have the necessary backup power for the uh, for the pumps. Yeah that they went with some sort of battery-powered uh, pumps which actually ran out of energy. What kind of nonsense is yeah, that? Yeah, that's true. Well, I don't think they expected to be without energy or power for exactly. that long I mean, time. Exactly, but that's, that's just it. They have to think... And like, that's what has to be revisited. Had there been like an LP gas or some sort of a tank there with a month's supply in there, we wouldn't have this problem right now. Yeah, no, that's a good point. It's, there's, that's going to be a fair topic of discussion, but you're absolutely right. It's, 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 it's clean energy and it's cheap when you look at the long term. I believe in nuke power. I think it is the way to go. I'd like to see, like your, some of the other people there, um, uh, alternates uh, invented because it's possible. But we've got to look towards the immediate future, the next 5, 10, 15 years, and I don't see any of this stuff coming along. To well, and, that, and that's where I think one of the key things, well, and I'll maybe end a little bit with this, is that the one thing we ought to be doing is, is research and promoting yes. innovation and promoting ideas and, and not taking anything engineers. off the table. <laughs> Training more engineers, not taking these issues off the table. You know, the word, there's no gold, you know, they always say there's no silver bullet, and so. Yeah, and for, we, we need to, well, we will have you back at another time, and we will have a further discussion on this, because it's really, it's critical. It's not just important, it it's is. critical to the American way of life. Thank you very much for being with us. Okay. And I've been speaking with uh, Roger Walker, uh, we've been talking about energy. I'm not going to go into a long discussion of what we just covered. Uh, it was very interesting to me. See you guys.